Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips, and I'm going to continue in my relating to you the great information that came out of the first conference of the Institute for Scientific Freedom in Copenhagen, Denmark. And today, I'm going to talk about Tamiflu. So I'll start by telling you Tom Jefferson is a Cochrane reviewer who is the consummate scientist, a principled person who is relentless in gathering information and disseminating it to the public. And I've read his articles for years. Um, one of the things that I was looking forward to was meeting him and talking to him and hearing his presentation. You know, being in the same room with these people was really an honor for me. Um, and when I tell you this story, it, it's just shocking that somebody could still have such a great sense of humor. I mean, this, he's a funny guy in spite of what I'm going to tell you in all these battles that he's fought. So, his presentation uh, was concerning antiviral drugs like Tamiflu and Relenza, and how in spite of being useless and potentially harmful, governments all over the world stockpiled them based on the recommendations from the Centers for Disease Control and the World Health Organization. The United States invested $1.3 billion in acquiring antiviral stockpiles, and the government of the UK invested $424 million in a stockpile of the drugs. Jefferson's story starts when the swine flu H1N1 epidemic was predicted in 2009. It never happened, by the way. And uh, there are articles in the health briefs that will explain to you that the epidemic was made up and that the CDC and World Health Organization essentially advised everybody to stop testing for flu and just assume anybody with a sore throat or fever had the flu so that they could pump up the numbers after they'd made all this investment in flu vaccines and all that sort of thing. But anyway, the governments of the UK and Australia commissioned Cochrane to update its existing review of the drugs. The existing Cochrane review, which concluded that Tamiflu reduced the risk of secondary complications like pneumonia, infection, hospitalizations, was based on an analysis of 10 manufacturer-funded trials, eight of which were never published. The analysis itself, on which um, uh, Cochrane based its initial review, was authored by researchers who also worked for the drug maker, which was Roche as well. In order to conduct a real review, the Cochrane Group needed to see the unpublished trial data, but they faced an unbelievable amount of resistance in obtaining the data. For example, John Treanor, the lead author of one of the Tamiflu treatment trials, told the British Medical Journal that he did not request the primary data, didn't have access to it, and didn't perform an independent analysis of it. So he's one of the people that did it. <laughs> So I guess John Trainer sat in a room and made stuff up. That's really what it is. Um, the lead author of another Tamiflu trial, Carl Nichols Nicholson, said he, quote, did not recall seeing the primary data. He said that the statistical analysis had been conducted by Roche, and he analyzed the secondary data. In other words, he took what Roche gave him, put his name on it, and then published it in a medical journal. The Cochrane team was told the same thing by the authors of the pooled analysis. In other words, several authors of articles favoring um, uh, Roche and favoring Tamiflu were written by people who never saw data. They just reported what Roche gave them without any verification at all. So Jefferson and his group went directly to Roche and asked them to provide the data to the group, and the company offered to do so only if he and others would sign a confidentiality agreement, similar to what I was talking about on Tuesday. Well, they said, listen, there's no sense in doing this if we can't tell anybody about it, so no, we're not going to sign a confidentiality agreement. Well, due to public pressure brought about by an open data campaign conducted by the British Medical Journal, in 2009, Roche publicly agreed in a BMJ article to provide the data to Cochrane reviewers. In spite of the public pronouncement, Jefferson and his group continued to be denied access to the information uh, that they had requested. By 2012, the campaign was still ongoing. <laughs> <laughs> the H1N1 flu pandemic has never happened, and we're four years later. And several letters between Cochrane and Roche and GlaxoSmithKline, uh, World Health Organization, European Medicines Agency, and uh, all kinds of institutions that either make the drug or are supposed to regulate the drug. So all this correspondence going back and forth. And British Medical Journal covered all of this. And here's what was discovered through all of this correspondence. So first thing. The World Health Organization started recommending Tamiflu without ever reviewing any data. The European Medicines Agency approved Tamiflu and had never reviewed the underlying data. So people make stuff up and then they take it to the regulatory agencies who take the made up stuff and then make their decisions about it. This should give you great comfort when you walk into a doctor's office or a hospital, right? 
The Centers for Disease Control was recommending the use of Tamiflu and encouraging the stockpiling of the drug by the U.S. government without ever reviewing the underlying data. Even worse, the CDC was promoting the drug even though the FDA, the toothless FDA, who gets paid by the drug companies, actually put this on the label. Quote, serious bacterial infections may begin with influenza-like symptoms or may coexist with or occur as complications during the course of influenza. Tamiflu has not been shown to prevent such complications. That's the only reason for taking the drug. So here's what you have going on. The FDA basically says this drug was approved to reduce the complications of flu. It doesn't do that. Okay to prescribe and take it anyway. And then the CDC says, great drug, people should take it. In fact, the U.S. should invest $1.3 billion in stockpiling it to make sure we have enough of the useless drug for all the people who are going to get the flu. It just goes on. A decade after Roche completed phase three clinical trials of the drug, the data remained unpublished and as of February this year, 2019, still has not seen the light of day. Four years after Roche promised to deliver the data, the Cochrane reviewers finally received the clinical study reports for 107 studies from the European Medicines Agency, GSK and Roche, which comprised 150,000 pages of data. Analysis published a few months later showed that there was no evidence that Tamiflu reduced complications of the flu, but the analysis did identify new concerns about potential harms from the drug. As for the World Health Organization, a BMJ investigation revealed that the scientists advising the WHO on pandemics and related issues, this will shock you, were on the payroll for companies that make the antiviral drugs. Surprise, surprise, right? The WHO had not disclosed this conflict of interest to the public. They did, in response to all this, downgrade the status of the drug. Cochrane tried twice to get them to take it off the schedule, which they refused to do, of course. The CDC, this is where it really gets interesting, has not changed its recommendations in favor of Tamiflu in spite of the evidence. BMJ published correspondence concerning this issue between CDC and Jefferson and his colleagues. In response to a four-page email with detailed questions concerning CDC's policy on Tamiflu, the researchers received a one-page response which did not include answers to any of the questions posed in the four-page uh, email. And you can read this all online, okay, and I've got the references in here if you want to follow up on this stuff. Um, when follow-up inquiries were sent, the CDC replied that it had nothing to add and copied in the email its former non-response. Later, the CDC and other public health agencies stated that they prefer the results of observational studies instead of randomized controlled trials <laughs> in evaluating a drug. That's the only way to evaluate a drug is a randomized controlled trials. These are people making health policy in the United States and around the world, and they don't like randomized controlled trials. The Cochrane reviewers responded that the CDC and other health authorities' responses were weakened by, quote, weakened by selective citation of evidence and the fact that none of their organizations claim to have independently scrutinized the more complete evidence from clinical study reports. So where does all this stand now? Health authorities still promote Tamiflu. Roche places ads on television during flu season, making false claims about the efficacy rate and side effects of the drug. At this time, Roche is a whole lot more powerful, along with its government partners, than Jefferson and his researchers, so the company can do anything it wants to do. Nothing will change until at some point in time an organization is formed that has more power than these people, just by virtue of a number of individuals involved, and I think that's kind of where we all want to go with this in the long term. So the misbehavior continues. I mean, can you imagine how powerful you have to be to have all this happen and you're still advertising a drug that's useless and harmful on national television. I mean, I'm sure there's people at FDA and CDC and World Health Organization see that. Nothing gets done. You know what? If I jaywalk, okay, I'm probably going to get a ticket and get in trouble. And these people get away with this. It just blows your mind. All right, well, hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. I'll be back to you next week with more news. And remember, we have great training programs to teach you how to get involved in countering this kind of thing. Um, we have great, great programs for health professionals. Keep in touch with us, Pam Popper at MSN.com. Get involved with this effort. Let's take these people out. Thank you for watching.